Welcome to the Widowed Mom Podcast, episode 247, More Myths About Grief, part one. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the podcast. I've been busy today working on a retreat for my Mom Goes On Masters members. Mom Goes On Masters is the program that women can do once they have completed Mom Goes On. And we have a retreat every six months and I am planning it and having so much fun doing it. I was just going to recycle the retreat that we did last May or last March because it was, I loved it. It was so awesome. But then I did the game one versus game two podcast episodes and had such a great response to those and thought it would be so much fun to create a whole retreat experience around the idea of your game two playbook. And so that's what we're doing. So I love my job that this is the kind of fun stuff I get to do and I get to order presents that are themed and it's really, really fun for me. And I love it. So anyway, that's what's going on in my world. I want to talk today about some more grief myths. Hopefully if you've been listening to the widowed mom podcast for a while, you feel like you're aware of a lot of myths that we have about grief. But the more I have conversations with people, the more I realize there are more myths to address. So I'm going to do a two-part episode. And in today's episode, I'm going to cover six more myths Next week, I'm going to cover six more myths, and I want to remind you that episode number two of the Widowed Mom podcast, which is one of our most downloaded podcast episodes, is also called Myths of Grief, and you might want to go take a refresher and listen to that one if you haven't in a while. So let's dive in. More myths about grief. Number one, (laughs) grief is only about death. No, no, no. Grief is the natural human response to a perceived loss. And yes, bereavement, right, our our response to a death loss is certainly a type of grief, but it is not the only type of grief. And I want to make sure that we're reminding ourselves of that. Grief is so much more than death. It's any time we thought something was going to go some way and then it went another way and our experience of that difference feels like a loss. So that could be the loss of relationships. That could be the loss of something that's going on in our health. That could be any number of significant life changes, not just the death of a loved one. And sometimes grief comes after something we wanted. So I am thinking about someone right now who I was just coaching inside of Mom Goes On who realized that the way she had been thinking about herself was optional. She didn't realize that this judgment she'd been carrying around about herself that felt so true to her, and she's carried it around for 40 plus years, is optional. And when she, when we coached on it and she became aware that she had been carrying around this really kind of mean judgment about herself... She was relieved to know that it wasn't true and that she didn't have to keep thinking of herself in that way. And also it brought up some grief because she realized that there were all these other years where that belief has been weighing her down. And had she not had it, it could have been different. And she realized that she had lost something that she didn't even know she had lost, right? That's grief too. So it's not just death. It's about perceived loss and the impact of that. So I want you to really give yourself permission to broaden up your idea of what grief is so much more than just death. This one I've said in a few different ways, the second one, but I'm going to just keep saying it again because I, I don't think I can say it enough, which is the myth is that grief has an end point. It just doesn't. It, it is, there is no place that we reach unless we can time travel where we don't have thoughts and feelings about a loss, right? If grief is the natural human response to a perceived loss and we're always going to have a response to it, that response might, might change over time. The intensity of the emotion we feel around that loss might change over time, but there is no place that we arrive at where the grief no longer exists. It just changes and we might integrate it into our lives, right? We we might decide how we want to think about it, but we don't get to a place where it's over. 
and I want to keep telling you this because I know you're probably telling yourself that you should be somewhere that you aren't. And also I know that people in your life, even if they love you deeply, are also buying into this. And they're also telling you that things like, well, you should move on. You know, aren't you feeling better by now? Or they're kind of looking at you like, why haven't you reached that place where grief is over? You're still dealing with this. And they're just misinformed. Most of them love us. They're just misinformed because they have bought into the idea that grief ends and it just simply doesn't. Okay. Myth number three for today is that you can only grieve someone that you were close to. Not true at all. Proximity to someone, emotional closeness with someone has nothing to do with grief. You can 100% Grieve someone or something you never met or had no involvement in, right? If, if you are only limited to grieving about things that you had direct experience with or people who you knew closely, no, it's just, just not how it is. So all of the time we are feeling losses about people we don't know, about situations we are not involved in, and that is grief. So don't let anybody tell you that you can only grieve someone you were close to, right? And I want you to notice the impact of what telling yourself that you're wrong is when you're experiencing it, right? If you are having an emotional response to something, a loss, something that feels like a loss to you, and you're telling yourself that it's not okay that you have that response because you weren't close to that person or that situation, you're literally rejecting a part of your own experience, which is going to make it harder for you to support yourself through it. So it's not helpful when we tell that to other people, and it's definitely not helpful when we tell that to ourselves. You can 100% grieve something or someone that you are not close to. Okay. Fourth myth is that you can go backwards in grief. You cannot. There is no such thing. There is no forwards. There is no backwards. I'll say that again. You cannot go backwards. There is no forwards and there is no backwards. So if you are going about life and noticing the intensity of your emotions is at a particular, I'll say setting for lack of a better word, and then all of a sudden you start to have a more intense experience. You have more grief grenades. You have just a different quality of emotion. It's really easy to say, well, I was doing so well, but now I'm sliding backwards. No, there is no such thing. You are a human who is having thoughts and feelings. That is it. It doesn't mean you are sliding backwards. It means you are a human who is having thoughts and feelings. And the experience of grief and the intensity of emotions is not something that is linear or predictable. It's very messy and it's often very unpredictable. So when your brain tells you that you're sliding backwards, you're going backwards, you're on a slippery slope, I give you permission to not listen to that. This is probably going to create more suffering and make it harder for you to support yourself as you experience whatever it is you're experiencing. All right, number five. If you're upset after a certain time, then it's self-pity. I'm making a face. You probably can't see it unless you're watching me on YouTube. But have you ever thought that about someone? Or, ha or, or have you ever noticed them thinking that about you? Maybe they've told you? Come on. It's been long enough. You're just in pity mode, right? You're just being a victim. Oof. And what does this imply, right? Well, it implies that A, there's an end to grief, and that B, there's some sort of socially acceptable time frame where we're allowed to have feelings about a loss. And I just want to offer that that's nonsense. We're allowed to have feelings about a loss for the whole rest of our lives. Period. And it doesn't matter what other people think is socially acceptable. And sometimes we have to be the ones that validate our own experience. So because you have feelings after a certain amount of time has passed, whatever that time is, because everybody seems to have a different opinion on it, it has nothing to do um, with self-pity. That does not mean you're doing anything wrong, okay? 
So if somebody's telling you that, please don't listen. And then myth number six for this episode is that grieving people always want to talk about their loss. Or that grieving people never want to talk about their loss. Okay, If there is an always or a never in a statement that someone makes about grief, we can pretty much assume that it is a myth. Because there are very few always or nevers. Some people who are experiencing grief want to talk a lot about it. Some people don't. Some people prefer solitude. Some people prefer introspection and nonverbal expressions. Right? And it doesn't mean anything about you based on what you prefer. So if someone is giving you a grieving people always or a grieving people never, be aware, be alert. Put a little red post-it note on that one to pay attention to it because it's not going to be accurate. And also, I think it is another myth worth pointing out that talking about grief is always best. It's not. For some people, it's helpful. For some people, it's not. It is, we, we definitely don't need to pressure ourselves or others to talk about something that maybe we don't feel ready to talk about or that we don't want to talk about. There are lots of different ways to deal with grief and always and nevers are usually going to be myths. Okay. All right. That's what I got for you this week. Stay tuned next week. I'm going to give you six more. And I also want to invite you to register for my upcoming grief plateau masterclass. Have you ever listened to a podcast when they say this episode is brought to you by my blah, 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 as though they didn't create the thing. I <laughs> just listening to a podcast the other day where I was like, this, this podcast is brought to you by my blah, blah, blah masterclass. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like you sponsored your own stuff? No, but <laughs> I would love to tell you about the grief plateau masterclass that is coming up on March 5th. If you are interested in that, you can go check it out. Coaching with Krista.com forward slash grief plateau. That's where all the information is in 90 minutes. I'm going to do my best to cover what happens to us when we get to a grief plateau? Again, it's a term I totally made up, but it's because nobody else was articulating it in a way that felt true to me and, and in a way that I have seen happen so many times to the people that I have worked with, which is that usually after we get back to a place, you know, where we're actually functioning in, in grief. And by that, I mean, if we wanted to go back to work, we could, right? We're, we're having days that uh, are celebrating, you know, bigger things than eating and showering. Like we're, we're kind of back to functioning in the world. And also though, we don't feel great, right? Also the quality of life isn't where we want it to be. And we definitely aren't creating post-traumatic growth in that place, right? We're definitely not back to loving life. We're surviving it, but we're not thriving at all. That's the grief plateau. And that's what I want to talk about. So in this masterclass, we're going to talk about some of the reasons that we stay stuck there right? The mistakes that we make that we don't even know that we're making. We're going to talk about um, the details of post-traumatic growth, uh, what it is, what it looks like. Um, we're going to talk about why we need to be paying attention to our autonomic nervous systems and what that has to do with anything. And then I'm also going to be talking about two skills that I think everybody needs if we want to get through a, a grief plateau. So if you are interested in that, come check it out, coachingwithkrista.com forward slash grief masterclass. And I will see you next week. And we will talk about part two of more myths about grief. All right. That's what I have for you this week. I love you. You've got this. Take care and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.